one. Let's see. Could I ask everyone to take their seats, please? You could all take your seats now. Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon and welcome for, uh, to this very special service as we give thanks for Bishop Lee and Liz for their life and ministry here in the Diocese of Bristol. And in a moment, Stephanie's going to do the formal welcome. Uh, my name's Chris Dobson. I'm the Diocesan Advisor for evan Parish Evangelism and Discipleship. And together with Stephanie, who is our Warden of Readers, we're going to be leading you through uh, this afternoon. So just a few notices uh, to get out of the way, first of all. If during the service you need to use a toilet, there is a, are accessible toilets on that side of this room. Other than that, there are toilets up on the ground floor for you. Should there be a fire escape or fire alarm? Uh, yep, we, yeah, the one follows the other, just to get in the right order. Should there be a fire alarm, there are exits on either, si on either side of the, at the back of the room. If you have any issues of mobility, uh, just go out of the door and wait for someone to come and help you. Okay? Throughout uh, this service, there are going to be some, uh, there's a video. Uh, welcome to the uh, person who's videoing us. And we also have a photographer. If for any reason you don't want to appear any photographs that might be published on social media or anything, please let Tom know. He's wearing, he's at the back there. Uh, and he's got a label there, please let him know if he takes your photograph and you don't want to appear uh, within any of those pictures. If you're new to church or unfamiliar with our Anglican worship, please don't worry about anything at all. We just want you to feel comfortable and at home. If you should find that you stand up at the wrong time, don't worry, we've all been there. Uh, please just enjoy the service and feel very 
relaxed and at home, and you're most welcome. If you uh, struggle to stand or sit at any time, we will be announcing and inviting people to stand up or to sit as the songs uh, come, but please don't feel under any pressure to do that. Uh, we just want people to feel comfortable, and nobody's looking at what anybody else is doing. So please feel free to respond to the music or the songs in any way that you like. If you're not familiar uh, with praying, then please do feel free just to listen to the words and resonate with those that make sense and chime with you. And we know that this service, uh, Lee really wants us to be reflecting not just on him and his life and Liz and her life and ministry here, but actually about Jesus. We had, just before we came on, the song, Jesus, Be the Center. And I know that Lee would want Jesus to be the center of everything that you do today. So I'm Stephanie, and may I add my welcome. We have people here from Swindon, from the wider Diocese of Bristol, from Oxford, and from further afield, and people joining in online. So we are delighted to welcome also many distinguished guests, including the Lord Lieutenant and her deputies, former High Sheriffs of Wiltshire, one of our local MPs, the Mayor of Swindon, and many carrying major responsibilities in roles across the wider region, including the Diocese of Bristol. Thank you so much for helping to make this occasion a very special one. Other guests are people who have journeyed with Bishop Lee at different times of his life, from before ordination to recent years. We are glad that Liz is here and other members of Lee's family, who, of course, are the most important people. But we also welcome friends from Liz's workplace and members of the Swindon Leadership Breakfast and also from the Swindon Road Club. Thank you for coming dressed up. <laughs> Many clergy and licensed lay ministers are here today, as well as Bishop Viv and Bishop Mike, and too many others to welcome. You are all most welcome to be here. And as Chris has said, Bishop Lee was concerned that this gathering would not just be about him, but about us as a community and about the God whom Lee and Liz serve. So we will start with a focus on God. And as Chris has said, please feel free to stand, sit, sing, or just listen as you feel comfortable. And we won't keep saying that, but it always applies. Since Lee is both a scientist and a Christian, it seems appropriate that our first song reminds us of a God who creates and redeems. So if you wish, please stand and join in with our opening hymn, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder.
Thank you. Please sit. I'm now going to introduce Catherine Price, who is a licensed lay minister in this diocese and has worked with Bishop Lee through the LLM Council and the North Wiltshire Mission Area. So licensed lay ministers in Bristol Diocese exercise a very wide range of ministries. We don't all do everything. But collectively, we lead traditional services and modern services, liturgical worship, non-liturgical worship, sung worship. We're involved in messy church, wild church, adventure church, eco church, and online church. We play instruments and we sing in worship bands and choirs. We run toddler groups, children's clubs, and youth groups, and we do godly play. We go into schools and lead collective worship and open the book and convene schools' worship councils. We run Experience Christmas and Easter Experience and Life Path. We organize shoebox collections. We go into care homes and hospitals. We run Alpha courses and Lent courses and Bible studies and lead home groups. We enable mission and discipleship and we live out our faith in our workplaces, in our leisure activities, and in our homes. We pray for and with people in church and at home and at work and sometimes just out on the street. We manage rotors. We assist with communion in church and we take communion to people in their homes. We work with baptismal families and prepare people for confirmation. We are poets and storytellers. We preach the word of God and we witness in our communities. And I know that Bishop Lee wants this section to be about lay ministry and not about him. But I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that for nearly two decades, this huge variety of ministry has taken place with his sponsorship and support. He has encouraged us, nurtured us, even admonished us occasionally. He has rejoiced in and promoted the diversity of our ministries. For him, lay ministry in this diocese has never been a second-class ministry. And through it all, in good times and bad, he has always challenged us to be the best that we can be for God and for the churches and communities we serve. And I would like to think that there have been times, Bishop Lee, when we have in our turn encouraged and supported you. And I know, because you've told me, that at least one of the verses that we gave you when you came to one of our conferences still sits on your study wall. So on this occasion, I want to give you another verse, a verse which is for you and Liz, but also for my fellow LLMs as we continue in the calling that God has laid on us, a word of encouragement as we seek to be the light of Christ in what is at times a very dark world. The opening two verses of Isaiah 60. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. And so may God add his blessing to his word for us today and bless you, Bishop Lee and Liz, as you move into this next phase of ministry. Amen. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Licensed lay ministry has been a very important part of uh, Bishop Lee's ministry. Uh, but another part that has been very special to him over the years is Uganda. 
And uh, particularly leadership development, leadership is a theme that we'll come back to a number of times in this service. Uh, in the very, one of the very first leadership conferences that uh, we uh, ran in Uganda for clergy, and Lee cycled from the north of Scotland uh, right down to the bottom of Cornwall to raise money for that. One of the participants was a man called Wilson Kitara, who went on to become the Bishop of Northern Uganda, and we're now going to hear a message of support and love from him. I greet everybody in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'm happy to talk about our beloved Bishop, Bishop Lee. We got information that Bishop Lee is retiring and leaving us with some Before I became a bishop, I had known Bishop Lee. By then, when we had problems in Northern Uganda, especially the guy who was keeping witness back in the region of Northern Uganda, when there was a war between the government army and then the rebel group led by rebel army. Many people suffered here, and as a result of the suffering of the rebel invading his place, killing people, cutting the limbs, and doing a lot of atrocities, during that difficult time is when we received Bishop Lee in the Bible, which I was the Bible translated by the Lord. Bishop Lee, why Bishop Lee, the life of the chief? We visited us during this difficult time which was very severe here and the suffering of the tribal people. Out of this visit, Bishop Lee acted as an advocacy for the problems here in our diocese. And we got a book. Out of that, we got assistance from a humanitarian organization. We, as well as we also had Pierpan Duque, who had intervention in the Bible of Sydney. I want to thank Bishop Lee, I want to thank uh, Pierpan Duque, the, they are still here with us uh, today. Bishop Lee has been very important in our life. And because of that, we really view him as a practical guider for the country because he came. He has been found very meaningful to the memory of Bishop, the Synod of the Diocese of Sydney, honored Bishop Lee by naming a theological summit in the Diocese of Sydney. Today, Bishop Lee rises to very contact. He has been one of the bishops who visited us during the time we were so much in difficulty in Northern Uganda, in the Diocese of Sydney. On my own behalf and on behalf of the diocese, I want to wish Bishop Lee well of all this time in his retirement and in his summit as a retired servant of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord watch over you, Bishop Lee, and your family. The Lord make his face shine graciously. While Liz Townend comes forward to introduce our next item, uh, there is a collection at this service that Bishop Lee has asked will go towards the Bishop Lee Rayfield Theological College. So there will be lots of red buckets around, and I know that later on we'd really ask you to be generous. If you aren't able to give, because uh, you haven't got any cash, if you've got a card or a telephone, there is a, by the, the Cope and Mitre, which you'll see later, there is a payment station there. Liz. Good afternoon. I'm Liz Townend, the Diocesan Director of Education for this diocese. I'm honoured to be here today to say thank you to Bishop Lee. You manage our, as chair of our Diocesan Board of Education, 
you manage us beautifully so we don't go too feral on you and we are delighted that you have such a heart for the children and young people of our cities, our towns and our villages and as you know our 72 schools, church schools are very, very different and now I'm just here to say a huge thank you along with one of the classes from Ashton Keynes Church of England Primary School. Unfortunately, the head teacher and the children couldn't be here today, but they've videoed a song for you from one of your faves, I Sing Pop, <laughs> so that we can all have a bit of a bop along with this class, which is full of children with additional needs. And we thank you, and thank you for your blessing for your Diocesan Board of Education and the children of this diocese over many years. There's something for you not to forget. Every step you take, Jesus will be there carrying you. Thank you to the children of uh, Ashton Keene School. Uh, Cy Halls uh, is going to come forward now to share a little bit about the work that he's doing on the Pinehurst Estate and across wider Swindon. Thank you, Cy. Thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Simon. I have the privilege of leaving sh uh, leading Shine Pinehurst, which is the expression of church in the north of Swindon in Pinehurst. Bishop Lee, along with the then Archdeacon Alan Hawker, was key in the starting of Shine and taking a risk with an inexperienced, 
enthusiastic but naive, lay, uh, not yet ordained, younger me with uh, a lot less grey hair at that stage. Over the years, Shine has grown and now is making a huge amount of difference to the lives of many, particularly young people in our neighbourhood. Through our school's work, through our youth clubs, our work on the streets, we work with a wide range of young people, especially with those who are affected by immensely challenging home lives, those that are affected with uh, extreme mental health challenges, and those increasingly that are affected by issues around knife crime, criminal exploitation, and county lines. In so many tough situations, it's our privilege to take the good news of the love of Jesus to the margins of our town, to share this good news, this great news that the Jesus came as a, lo a love for all, regardless of race, gender, socioeconomic background, or where you happen to be born or grew up. It's good news for all. Through campaigns like his most recent bike ride and other fundraising, Bishop Lee has always tried to support and listen to those on the margins. I remember a meeting where Bishop Lee came to meet with one of the mothers that uh, we work with. And she had been through so much through her life, so much kind of challenge and brokenness. And she shared her life and the kind of challenges of her everyday life as she's affected by poverty and disadvantage. And she was greeted with that warm, kind compassion that we experienced through Bishop Lee. And she remembers that day so clearly. It's a day that sticks in her mind, a day when a bishop took time to listen to her. At our minister's gathering this week, we were reminded of one of the most effective ways of combating knife crime and stopping young people from being put into the criminal justice system was by taking the time to care for and listen to and treat kindly the young people we meet. It's the way that Jesus gave himself to those who were the last, least, and the lost. It's the way he gave people such dignity, meaning, and purpose. So thank you, Bishop Lee, for your kindness, your encouragement, and support. We thank you for the way that you've sought to listen and care for those on the margins. And thank you for being prepared to come stand in the cold of a hundred others as we shared our life and our service at our Community Carols event. And a special thank you from one of those occasions from the Bishop family who still have a selfie of you and them when the bishops met the bishop. And it is a particular pleasure to welcome Jonathan Bryan here today. And Bishop Lee was delighted to confirm him in 2016. And Jonathan has made a video with his words for us.
said the most significant thing by saying, In the final edit came true. All mention of my faith had been cut out. For 15 seconds I managed to get back in, repeating the name of Jesus, but due to a bloody mind and determination on my part. It was great that Bishop Lee made it to the premiere of the documentary on my school. A year later, I had the same experience when my memoir, I Can Run, was going through its final edits. At every single mention of the name Jesus had been removed and, at best, replaced with higher spiritual being. Again, I fought, and every mention of Jesus had to be argued back in. Knowing Bishop Lee is involved in the media, I bribed him with the promise of Brown. So it was fun to interview him on Zoom in my youth group in lockdown. Whether it's for church or in the media, Bishop Lee's message of Jesus always makes it into the net. Thank you. And Jonathan's here. And do uh, say hello to him as he, at the end of the service. He's sitting in the middle over here. Uh, do come and see him. One of the things that when I was talking with Lee earlier, he was saying about how he loves the fact that in Christ and through the cross, even young men shall rise up on wings like eagles. And I think, Jonathan, you've taught us that anyone can rise up on wings like eagles. And we've all been encouraged and inspired by your message. So thank you so much. And we're going to sing a song now which reminds us that Jesus can be the cornerstone of our lives. Again, all the songs here have been chosen uh, by Bishop Lee today. Are you glad to stand? is built on nothing less 
Please be seated. It's a great privilege now to welcome Keir Pritchard uh, to share with us. Keir was a police officer for 30 years in Wiltshire and then served his final five years as the chief constable. Uh, he informs me he's now in retirement. I hope I look as young and as good as he does. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one of the things that he said, he's a, been a really proud uh, member of the Swindon Leaders Prayer Breakfast that uh, Lee has been uh, leading. So, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, it's a really wonderful occasion, and it's just fantastic to be here on behalf of the entire group, uh, Bishop Lee. It's with great honour to stand here, actually, to offer some short reflections on the difference that Bishop Lee has made. We're all here because, in some way, Lee has had such a positive effect on each and every one of us. This will be the legacy of a generous, kind, and decent man that I will return to later. So in 2014, Bishop Lee and the then Chief Executive of Swindon Borough Council, Gavin Jones, had a bold vision to create a network of people trying to make a difference for Swindon. They wanted a group who cared. They wanted a group who would work together with the right values and would lead their people to make that difference. So we were invited in those early stages to lunch at Arkles Brewery in Stratton alongside several distinguished guests, none more so than the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby and his wife. So alongside the really positive memories of that occasion, I also remember the sudden realization that we were undertaking a unique form of a selection assessment center <laughs> for this group. However, I think we all passed the test and the higher level vetting. And so the Swindon Leadership Group Breakfast Group was formed and continues to thrive today. I suppose it could be badged as a network, but it has been far more profound to us than that. While some members have changed across the years, it has been a space that has been enriched with insight from every person past and present. Groups like these will usually start with vigor, but they can often fade out for a variety of reasons. Not this one. I can honestly say it has been a very important part of shaping my leadership style and my personal resilience. So our coming together often coincided with a breakfast gathering in spaces perfectly suited for reflection and strong conversation. Lee was adamant that the group did not need a chair, but it's fair to say we relied heavily on his ability to bring us together, to coordinate things, maybe control things just a little, Lee, um, and to introduce concepts to make the most of our time together. So the first of those concepts was bringing of a leadership challenge that someone in the group was grappling with. The person would present the issue, what they've done to try to resolve it, and the impact that it was having on them. After a few quick-fire questions, you'd sit out of the group and observe their conversations. This was an incredibly powerful way to hear direct feedback and reflections from people who had a fresh perspective on your problem. The group would provide rich, insightful, and sometimes brutal feedback, all aimed at supporting you and providing you with solutions. These were quite frankly brilliant conversations which equipped you with the confidence to resolve your problem. The second concept called Lectio Divina involved reading a passage from the Bible. First off, Bishop Lee would read the passage aloud and we would follow silently. After personal reflection, we'd read it again, each taking a couple of sentences. And after one final read, we'd share a word from the passage which had personal resonance to us going on to expand on our reasoning. I remember some really deep and personal reflections arising. The scripture seemed to present an innocent vehicle for these to surface in a way that no other method could quite have achieved and seemed to draw congruence between historical events to the modern day issues being experienced by people in the room. I'm convinced there was some form of divine intervention ahead of these sessions 
Whilst the Bible passages were randomly selected, each one perfectly aligned and had such incredible relevance to what was going on for us in that moment, in that room. Such a simple concept, but such a powerful medium. So what impact has this group had on us? Well, it's said leadership roles can be lonely and at times incredibly difficult. The Swindon Breakfast Group created a trusted and confidential space for us to recharge and recalibrate. It's given us individual strength and wisdom when we needed it, and has allowed us to be of our very best for the people we endeavored to serve. So in closing, closing a chapter in life serves as a period of mixed emotions where people often talk about leaving a lasting legacy. Lee, I know you consider our group to be one of your greatest achievements, and so you should. Your innovative approach has been genuinely valued by all of us. It's been a great privilege to have been involved, and we sincerely hope that we can continue your work into the future. Lee, on behalf of us, thank you for giving us this gift. We all appreciate how difficult and different this period will be for you now. You've given so much of your time to help others. But it's now time for you, time for Liz, and time for your family. You can step down knowing that you have made such a positive difference to so many people's lives and have indeed left such a huge legacy. Lee, on behalf of our group, we wish you every success in your new life chapter in Farringdon. Thank you. Thank you, Kia. I have been hearing a little bit about that leadership breakfast, although I did not hear that it started off in a brewery. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good also to hear that the Bible, written many, many years ago, still has relevance for today. And it's good to hear that senior leaders in Swindon are being supported. But Swindon was also quick to respond to the needs of Ukrainian refugees here. So we're now going to watch a short video about that work. All we wanted to do was help. Like everyone else, we'd seen what stopped in the Ukraine, and we all felt the need to do something about it. Hosting was the first step, helping some of the first Ukrainians over into this country. Then some of the hosts got together and agreed we needed to set up a group. And Sweden Welcomes Ukraine was born. We worked out the most pressing needs and then started creating projects to help. How would Ukrainians learn English? How would they get around? How would they get their kids into school? How would they meet with each other? And importantly, how would they feel welcome here? We found some real leaders in our newly growing Ukrainian community, people that wanted to help their fellow Ukrainians and believed in our mission. It was really wonderful to see how Swindon broke up the need of people welcoming Ukrainians and I think it's so beautiful to see this kind of humanity uh, around us. When I started here on my own, it was very important for me to find some uh, Ukrainian, some people who want to do something together. I'm really happy that uh, I joined Swindon Welcomes Ukraine from the start. And uh, every time when we meet, I feel like uh, we are family. I feel for the more important, uh, one of the more important things is building community. When you feel that you are not alone, when you feel support English people, when you feel support the other Ukrainians, and you see other mother, children, <laughs> and you understand that you are not alone. Being a part of this big Ukrainian community is really made me really happy, and I would like more Ukrainians to have the same thing. Like Ukrainian, like good people, we will know the British help us so much with everything. Very important for that. The table, which was set up by the Papa Church, gave us a venue once a week to get our new community together. It quickly grew to over 100 Ukrainians and their hosts, each week coming together for a meal and to talk. We discovered through the table and our partnership with Swindon Welcomes Ukraine that actually many other organisations that were always stronger together. The second priority was transport. I had a request from a Ukrainian family for a bike. I put the request on Facebook and was flooded with people offering their bikes. So Daisy learned how to get qualified in fixing bikes, and we set up a bike repair 
we had over 230 bikes donated from local residents, and we've serviced approximately 210 of those, and we've given out 165 bikes to date to Ukrainians. Next up, we wanted Ukrainians to feel welcome. We ran open mic nights in a local bar, celebrated some birthdays, and got the community together as often as we could to meet each other. We were kind enough to offer trips to see them do the great thing, so we ran a trip to the Houses of Parliament with the MP Robert Buckland, and the church team organised summer holiday day trips to places like the beach to bring everyone together, to bring family together. Felt really good. Our committee chair, Sophia, even decided to raise funds for the committee by walking 600 miles from Sweden to Scotland on her pilgrimage to the peak. To extend our work further, we are fundraising by producing a local beer in collaboration with Hot Kettle, which will include the flavour and spirit of Ukraine. The committee faith is an ever-changing mission. Now our new focus is on finding accommodation after hosting and finding jobs locally for Ukrainians. Luckily, the Swindon business has opened its arms to Ukrainians keen to work. With the situation continuing, we need more people to open their homes to families in need. Swindon Liquid Ukraine has made a great start so far, and with your help, donations, bikes, and opening your homes to Ukraine, can we all make a bigger difference together? Thank you. It's been wonderful to see how churches across the whole of the diocese have responded so amazingly, working with councils and others to welcome refugees from Ukraine, but also from other areas uh, across the world. Now, uh, we all know that um, someone who's going to be a bishop can only be a bishop if they're well supported. And uh, we all want to just recognize the amazing uh, love and care and support that Liz has given uh, to Lee over the years. But uh, Lee also wants us all to be aware that it's not just about what God has done through him with her support, but that she has her own ministry and her own gifts and that God is at work through her. So we've invited Rianne and Janice just to come and share a little bit of what they've seen of God uh, and Jesus working through her. Sorry. Um, good afternoon. I'm Rian Cockle. I'm the head teacher of Oliver Tompkins uh, Church of England schools in Swindon. Uh, and I'm extremely touched and proud to be able to speak about Liz, uh, Bishop Lee. A few words. I'm not sure I can keep it to three or few words, but I'm, I'm timed, so here we go. Liz joined Oliver Tompkins Junior School back in 2006. We were a separate infant juniors at that point, and I was new, fresh-faced, no grey hairs, a young head and the infant. 2011, we federated together, and I became the head of the juniors and the infants. And from this point, I was blessed and always grateful to have Liz on my team, a friend and a part of the Oliver Tompkins family. She's had such a positive impact on all who have come through the doors of Oliver Tompkins. And when you talk about or talk to Liz, don't start me, you can't help but smile in response to the warmth and the caring she shows. In her 16 years at Oliver Tompkins, she has been a constant constant joy to have part of the team, working with Year 5, keeping Mr. Anson smiling, and that's not an easy task. <laughs> constantly hardworking, always going the extra mile, constantly patient with the children and me, and again, that's not an easy task. Constantly compassionate and kind, constantly friendly, always a smile on her face, a smile which lights the classroom and the staff room, and a gentle, warm tone in her voice a constant champion of developing a love of reading and making our library the focal point at the heart of our school. We have been on a journey together at Oliver Tompkins, a journey which has not always been straightforward or easy, but a journey that has helped us to achieve much. It has led us to develop individuals who are cheerful, polite, well-behaved and enthusiastic. Most importantly, it has enabled our pupils to flourish by being listened to, valued and kept safe. And in our vision statement, John 10.10, we have come that they may live life and live it to the full. And Liz brought with her a sense of calm and a feeling that all is good and all is well. And children and staff have been enriched and blessed. And in turn, Liz has been truly loved and valued. 
despite having returned, having returned and retired, uh, she continues to support as a volunteer and hearing children read and keeping Mr. Anson in line. Her outdoor retirement worship in January 22, we all very much spoke from the heart in all we said about Liz. It was easy and it was clear what we had to say in celebration and with the impact that she's made on us at Oliver Tompkins. However, I did like the intake of breath from the children when they suddenly made the connection that Mrs. Rayfield was married to Mr. Rayfield. <laughs> <laughs> Took him a while. I, like many others at Oliver Tompkins, have always been very fortunate and blessed to have known and worked with Liz. My mum proudly tells everyone in the village in Wales that her daughter works with the Bishop of Swindon's wife and knows the Bishop of Swindon. So thank you for that. <laughs> Liz and Lee, you now enter a new journey and a new adventure ahead of you. Sees each sunrise and sunset, fully live each day. Walk into this new landscape with hope and confidence, knowing you've given so much to so many and enriched so many lives. Now's your time. Engage with the beauty of creation, connect with the wishes, passions, hopes and dreams you have but have not yet had time to fulfil. My prayer and blessing for you both is not to leave anything behind, but walk forward in all you can be, all you can enjoy, and all you can give to one another, to this new page and the next chapter of your life. Thank you, Rianne. I'm going to echo much of what Rianne has already said, but for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Janice Titcombe, and not only was I privileged to work as Bishop Lee's secretary um, from when he arrived in Swindon until my retirement, I've also had the great pleasure of Liz's friendship over those years. And when Messy Church, Old Town, was launched 10 years ago, Liz and I <coughs> joined the core team and have worked together each month planning and preparing messy church crafts and activities. I think it's fair to say that we made a great team. We sometimes had to rack our brains for ideas or to work out how to make something actually look like it does in a picture. Um, but I could always rely on, on Liz's creativity. She could always spark an idea and find workable solutions. We've had fun with shaving foam and marbles, pipe cleaners and beads, all kinds of cut-out things and glue, very wet paintings, even after Liz had given them the hairdryer treatment, glitter and gems, biscuit and cupcake decorating. But Liz, I have to share that the fondant icing and cocoa you rolled into little balls to make edible donkey poo <laughs> on Palm Sunday last month was just... Was, that was just the best. <laughs> when I met Liz and Bishop Lee on their first visit to Swindon, Lee described himself to me as being tiggerish. And when he asked if I'd share a few words about Liz today, I thought back to that first meeting and Winnie the Pooh's kind-hearted, calm and patient friend Kanga came to mind that warm, protective mother of little Rue. Liz, thank you so much for blessing us with those Kanga qualities. Your kindness, calmness, calmness, patience, love of families and sense of fun. The team and the congregation will miss you so much at Messy Church Old Town. I hope you'll, well, we all hope you'll come back and visit us from time to time and that you might be a blessing to many families in your new hometown. One of the things that's been abundantly clear throughout has been that when uh, Lee and Liz have been doing uh, all of this work and service and going beyond, it's been because they've wanted to model the love and service and care of their Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're going to sing in response of the Lord, the shepherd, whom they have sought to model for us. You're willing and able, would you like to stand? The Lord, my shepherd, on the wall, he makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still wall.
Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Please sit, apart from Bishop here, would you like to come up? May I just pray for you before you speak? You certainly can pray for me. So let us pray. And Lord God, anoint Bishop Lee now. May he sense your presence and speak your words. And open our hearts and minds to hear that word that you have for us. Amen. Amen. As you, before you go, um, as you can see, we've got another lay minister here, licensed lay minister, who is actually the one, she's the chief LLM now, actually, and so I have to keep on her good side. But I need to tell you, I got something very special recently. Anybody recognize what this badge is? Where is it? Oops, it hasn't fallen off. No, it's there. Do you know what that one is? Yeah, Church of England, close. Yeah, <laughs> they're really hot stuff, these uh, MPs and sirs. No, anybody? Can you tell what that is? No? No, it's not a bicycle. For once, it's not a bicycle. Uh, the, the hint Let's is actually... <laughs> yeah, so what Have is I got it? one on the back? Go on, look, I've got it on. Yes, I know you put it on. I'm now an honorary, honorary. LLM. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, wow, my goodness. Um, thank you so much for everything that's happening. Thank you for those who've traveled a long way. I've got people who are from the church, which uh, I got the call in. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what the call is later. <laughs> but, um, and, and folk who've come from where I was a curate in London, people who've come from where I was a vicar, They've traveled a long way, and so I've even got one of my mates who I went to school with. Where are you? There he is, and obviously lots of others. It's, it's such a delight to have you here. Thank you very much indeed, and for all the kind things that you've said. Now, I'm a bit of an emotional guy, but I'm just feeling joy at the moment. That's good, so don't rub me the wrong way up. <laughs> okay. Well, let me begin with a quick show of hands. How many of you have heard people talking about FOMO? Okay, a lot of hands go up. How many of you have got not a clue what FOMO is? <laughs> yeah, that's better, right. FOMO is fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. And it was interesting to see the age ranges of those who knew what it was and those who had no idea at all. Frankly, for a long time, I was in the group that didn't know anything about that. Anyway, um, I guess we've all experienced at some time in our life uh, the fear of missing out, that you didn't get an invitation to something, or somebody knew that there was something on sale down the shops which you could save a fortune on. We've all been there, haven't we? Probably. Some more than others, like me. Anyway, um, I just want to hope, tell you that I hope that FOMO hasn't been a problem for anyone here. And the reason I think about that is because uh, anybody who wanted to come and thought they were missing out because they didn't have a ticket, how many of you haven't got a ticket or haven't responded to the invitation? <laughs> just one or two then. You're all here at invitation, and it's so good that you have accepted the invitation and made time to be here. It's a very special occasion, and we're grateful for you coming. Anyway, um, if you want to go to the coronation of King Charles III, and you haven't heard yet, 
let me just disappoint you now. <laughs> okay. So, earlier today, some of you may have heard an interview that I was invited to have on Radio Wiltshire. Anybody listen to Radio Wiltshire this morning? About three. <laughs> I need to have words with them, don't I? No, it was a bit more than three, but it wasn't a huge number. That's for sure. And um, basically, uh, I mentioned the, a letter inviting me to meet with the then Bishop of Bristol, Mike Hill. Mike's supposed to be Hill here, but is he? Oh, he is. I can't. Oh, there you are, Mike. Great. You're a bit like me. No, no, you're nothing like me, are you? <laughs> I just suddenly remembered. He is phenomenally punctual. <laughs> me? Let's pass that one. Anyway, so I, I, I had a letter inviting me to meet with Bishop Mike when he was the Bishop of Bristol. And we just got home from a holiday in Cornwall. Today's a wonderful place, isn't it? Yeah. So we come back. We got back late, sorted out all the mail quickly because there's a lot of mail, you know, little piles. This pile is... Um, on, well, what's this? Oh, this is home. This is work. Oh, this is junk mail. So the next morning, after we did that, I came down a bit earlier than Liz, and that's unusual as well, and I got, my, got a cup of coffee, and I just caught the junk mail. And the junk mail had in it um, something which said, strictly confidential. And I kind of figured quickly, because I'm sharp, <laughs> that this probably wasn't junk mail. And I opened it, and it was from Bishop Mike, and he's, he was just saying, there's a, there's, a kind of, there's a job that you might, you know, I'd like to have a chat with you over. And it was the post that I am now occupying. Now, thank God I didn't just dump that in the bin for recycling, <laughs> because he would have just thought, well, how about that? Glad I didn't interview him. <laughs> but as it happened, I opened it, and the rest is 18 years' worth <laughs> with two wonderful bishops that I've worked with. Um, so how does this relate to what I want to say now? Well, actually, if, if, that, if I hadn't noticed that that shouldn't go in the junk mail, a lot of my life would be very different, wouldn't it? Who knows where I'd be now, where Liz would be now. But actually, we got an invitation, and we followed it up. So I went to see Mike. And by the time I had a conversation with him, and on the, on the radio, if you do get to hear it, or you kind of go on, what is it, BBC Sounds, or whatever, I'm sure you can find it. Um, yeah, I was, I was really... A bishop wasn't for me. A, I'd seen the damage it did to other bishops, <laughs> not least the amount that the Bishop of Reading, who was my bishop then, was having to get through. I thought, I don't think I can work any harder than being an area dean. And well done, you area deans who are here. More power to your elbows. Um, but hey, I ended up becoming the Bishop of Swindon. Who would have thought it? But it happened. And it was absolutely the right thing. But there are times when we don't actually, something, we miss out on something. And that's kind of what I want to be talking about now. We had some uh, Bible read. Well, we had one Bible re reading, and it was very short, wasn't it? And some of you went, thank goodness for that. <laughs> I hope his sermons are short. Now, that was too much of a laugh for my... <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, essentially, some of us here are about as familiar with Bible reading as I am, and, and, so, and church services, as I am going to put a bet on a horse in a betting shop in the street. I have done it once. Shall I tell you how long, guess how long it took me after making a promise to myself to go and 
bet in a betting shop because I felt that's what church was like with the so many. It's the equivalent of me, a bishop, going into a betting shop. Them going into a church, we don't do that. Now, how many years do you think it took before I did it? Okay, we'll have hands up here. If you think it was five years, put your hand up. Uh, that's about five years. What about six years? What about ten years? A lot of ten years. Well, you're way out. <laughs> <laughs> it was seven years. And what... What was the catalyst for that was being out with my eldest son. Do you remember this, Matt? It was when you were graduating. You had other things on your mind. But it was Frankie Katori, and he was riding in the derby. And I thought, I've got to do it now. And actually, you're on hand, and I think you know about betting shops. <laughs> laughter so, so, actually, yeah, I went in. And do you know what? I won. Do you remember? <laughs> and being a good dad, I gave it to him. And he didn't put it on another horse. <laughs> we bred him well. <laughs> so anyway, church is a weird environment for lots of people. And it may feel that, like some of you here. Do you know what? You're in a weird environment actually yourself. Because there are some grown men wearing lycra at the moment. Would you like to stand up? <laughs> right, this is the Swindon Row Club. Give them a clap. <laughs> You're great guys. You keep me sane. Thank you. So we got those readings from the Bible. <laughs> First of all, do you remember either of them? Some of you do. And the other one's saying, uh, not, not quite. One of them, were, they, were, they were very simple. This is Jesus, and this is a major, major thing he wants to communicate. And he gives two examples, doesn't he? He says, first of all, he gave, gives two stories, effectively. And uh, the first one, the first one is about someone who basically goes into somebody else's field and stumbles upon some treasure. So he quickly hides it, and he goes off, and what does he do? He raises the money to go and buy the field. This is Jesus commending what you and I wouldn't really like if it was our field. <laughs> Jesus likes catching people out in what he says. But basically, he then went on to say another, another image. Do you remember what that one was? It was about pearls, wasn't it? And it was somebody who was basically the super shark of pearl sales. And he made his money from buying pearls and then probably selling them to many of the ladies who are here, or like the ladies here, who would love a pearl or two. Have you got a pearl, anybody? Yeah, a few pearls around. And um, basically... He sees a pearl that is so precious that he must buy it. He must have it. And he gets rid of all his other pearls in order to make that possible. So, two pictures. Two pictures. Two stories that we now tell of what Jesus said. And Jesus was absolutely brilliant. He was a master of painting pictures and telling stories. I'm in danger of saying something that's going to start you off on a thing that I don't want to start. So, but I'm going to risk it. Have you ever heard of an earworm? What's an earworm? Yeah, Peter. Yeah. It's a tune that you hear and you can't get rid of. Well, in a way, these stories were like an earworm because they were stories that people remembered and then they'd say, what the heck's that about? What's he saying? And he, remember what he started with. It's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of heaven was sometimes the, you know, the words that you'll read in the Bible. But that was the thing that Jesus talked about constantly. The kingdom of 
God is light. And then he gives something that people take away and say, what on earth is he going on about? But it sticks with them, and they begin to see it. And more importantly, those who begin to follow him begin to not just see it as an idea, they see it lived out. That this kingdom of God is something that is lived out. And Jesus and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God was his primary thing he talked about. Today we're here in a church building, but I remember, oh, actually it was the person who wanted to find their way here, who was with um, Points West, and said, I gather it's um, some kind of warehouse building. <laughs> You know, and then he said where the road was. Actually, are you still here, Philip? I think he's probably gone. But anyway, I thought, well, I wonder what he's going to make of it when he arrives. So, Jesus and his parables, because that's what we call those images, the parables. And they, they are meant, and they were meant by Jesus to get us thinking about something really important from another direction. Today you've had an invitation, or some of you have, and the others have got in by the back door. But you've been invited to something. And it's your choice whether you wanted to come or not. And some of you, for other re for reasons, aren't here, so I can't be talking to you. <laughs> but because something came up, and so often something comes up, or I'll try this later. I'll look into it sometime in the future. What I want to say today is, Jesus and what he said, Jesus and those invitations, they're always open, always open. But actually maybe the time to explore them has come for some of you. Some of you who kind of, actually you quite admire a lot about the church, but you also have lots of things about the Church of England that you don't admire. You won't be alone. <laughs> there is lots about the Church of England that could be fixed better. But actually, Jesus is at the center of this. Jesus is at the center of the Christian faith, and the Christian faith has changed the world, absolutely changed the world. And so many of the things we take for granted in what we call a secular culture is actually Christian. It's founded in the Christian faith. And we need to recover our memories about this. And remember to say, actually, it's not as simple as some people would like to say. But I want to finish, and that's a word that some people are saying, Rachel's finished, using the word finish now? <laughs> That's unheard of. Well, I want to surprise people. At the end of the day, what I want to say at the end of my time as the Bishop of Swindon is, please, if you have not explored this stuff, <laughs> this Christian faith, go and give it a run. Go and give it a run. The church here and lots of other churches across the town and probably in areas you are, they run things to help people engage with stuff that they might feel very, I, don't, I really don't get any of this. It's a bit weird. Um, I'm going to look like a dunce. We all look like dunces sometimes. But it's worth looking like a dunce if you're going to find something amazing which will transform how you see the world how you feel about yourself because you are loved by the God we see in Jesus Christ. You know, it struck me a few years ago, if I went out into uh, the local high street and said to them, uh, have you ever heard of what Christians call the gospel? And they might say, yeah, yeah, I've heard about gospel. I've heard gospel singers and all that stuff. And I say, well, what do you think the gospel is? They'd probably say, uh, uh, not sure. <laughs> what is it? What would you say? 
Just keep it quiet for the moment. What would you say? Don't take my thunder. What would you say to them? Well, a few years ago, I heard somebody, well, it, it's, a, it's probably 30 years ago. I know you don't think I'm that old. <laughs> and, and it was, um, the words were said that the gospel, this good news, is that God's way of being human is demonstrated in Jesus Christ, is available through the power of God's spirit, and is currently being demonstrated at a church near you. <laughs> it's all about being human and finding the humanity that we see in Jesus Christ and then recognizing slowly but steadily that this man, Jesus Christ, who was so extraordinary and who had such a, a life which is almost beyond belief, somebody who had powers to heal folk, who went to the people that no one else would touch, the person who eventually was kind of killed by a, 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 a horrible joining together of people who'd never, never loved it. They hated each other's guts. And he was tortured and died. But, or and, he came through it for us. So if you've never explored this, Christian faith. If you think that Christianity is something, well, it's for people who don't know any science. I like to be a living witness, or one of many, that scientists can believe this stuff. Absolutely. And in fact, there's a little story upstairs. In a, I'm wearing, I'm not wearing lycra upstairs. Mind you, I am wearing lycra under here. I'll show it later. I'm with you guys. <laughs> but actually, upstairs, there's my robes, my bishop's robes, and they tell a story. And every one of you, if you'd like one, can take away a little photo of me dressed up rather differently. You can see I, I've really got a very big dressing up box, haven't I? <laughs> but it tells you about why the symbols are there. And that tells you something about the heart of the Christian faith. And the Christian faith and following Christ is not a straightforward or easy one. It involves sacrifice. But what you find when you join, when you begin to follow and you find other followers, disciples, you become part of a family. A family of people who are the body of Christ and who are doing the kind of amazing things that you've heard spoken about today. Amazing things. And it is for everybody. So, there are some of you who have already made that decision. Frankly, bishops should be asking you to make that decision, shouldn't they? Oh, that was quiet. <laughs> so that's what I'd love you to do. Just go and find out more. And uh, there's a church near you that will be running something, something like Alpha or there's other courses. Or just go and sit down with somebody who's a Christian and say, how do you believe all this stuff? What happened to you? And you might find out some wonderful things that will change your life for the better. I think that's enough. Let's just hold a moment's quiet. gospel, the good news, God's way of being human, available by the very spirit of God and being demonstrated through churches. Where is Jesus in your life? Are you aware there's something more to come that you would like to take a step into? Is it something that you've wondered about but done nothing about? Is it something that actually you think's not for you but maybe, maybe, just maybe because of today you'll look into it a bit more. 
And so, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will work in our midst and that we might find out more deeply what it is to belong to you, to know your grace, to know your presence, to know the transformations that can come in our lives, in our spirits, and enable us to serve others in your name. And all the people said, Amen. Thank you. We're going to pray now. Uh, I'd invite you just uh, to be still for a moment as they, as the three people come forward to lead us in prayer. And during the next moment before they do, why don't you take a moment just to look into your heart in the silence to reflect on all that Lee has said and what you've heard through this service and ask yourself, is God perhaps speaking to me? Is there anything that I should do in response to what I've heard? And then uh, Kathy will begin in a moment to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for Bishop Lee as he begins the next chapter in his life. We give you thanks for him, for all his years of service as deacon, priest, and in his ministry as Bishop of Swindon. We give thanks for all the lives that he has touched through his warmth, influence, and his overflowing passion and love of you. We give thanks for his wisdom and faithfulness by word and example, as he has shepherded your people in the Diocese of Bristol. We especially pray for Bishop Lee's contributions to the Uganda Link for his faithful and persistent work in developing strong friendships with Ugandan leaders and communities. We pray that this work would continue to be fruitful, a real mark and legacy of Bishop Lee's commitment to the wider Anglican communion. Loving God, we pray for the Diocese of Bristol and all its ministers, lay and ordained. We pray that you would give them strength to be beacons of your light, love and hope in our communities. Following in the example of Bishop Lee, grant them courage to be instruments of your comfort, grace and peace in a broken world. We thank you for all that is good in the many and varied communities in the Diocese of Bristol. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Amen. Loving God, we thank you that you are a God who calls each one of us to be part of your mission to the world, calling us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that we might declare all your wonderful deeds. We thank you for those you have called over the years to be bishops, priests, deacons, and ministers in the Diocese of Bristol, and we praise you particularly for all those who are now training for the same. We thank you too for the work of Bishop Lee and those who have worked with him in raising up dedicated, faithful and generous leaders in this diocese. And we ask you now that you might call many more women and men into your service because we know that the harvest is still plentiful. Father, bless all those 
who have already responded to your call, as well as those who are yet to respond, that they may be firm in their faith, yet humble before you, that they may have understanding, yet be open to your word, that they may bring wholeness to others, yet know your healing themselves, that they may proclaim your word in power, yet hear your gentle whisper, in order that the whole church may serve you in holiness and truth, and to the glory of your name. Amen. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the love, energy and commitment that Bishop Lee has brought to his time here in Swindon and the wider diocese, for his work with children and young people in schools, for his guidance as chair of the Diocesan Board of Education, which has helped bring an education to many with kingdom values at its heart, for his support of head teachers, staff and students as they've coped with many varied challenges, such as the COVID pandemic. We give you thanks for his humor, his genuine care for all people, and his joy for spreading the gospel message of the kingdom, which he has a knack of doing in an engaging, contemporary way. We give thanks for his heart and commitment for mission in our diocese and in Swindon that over the past 18 years, he supported families and communities in so many ways, including using his love of cycling to raise funds for hard-pressed Swindon families suffering cost of living pressures, for his reaching out in service and friendship to local business and community leaders, and for his understanding of the challenges we all face living in today's world, and his words of wisdom when talking to others. May God uphold you, Lee and Liz, in all you do as you continue your journey. Amen. Thank you. My name's Tom. <coughs> Excuse me. My name's Tom. I'm one of the team here at Patton Church, and it's my privilege in the next couple of moments to lead us all as the family and friends and colleagues of Bishop Lee and Liz in praying for them. Um, Bishop Lee, you referenced a few moments ago the Spirit of God. And as we come to pray for you, and we pray that the Spirit of God fills you afresh in this new era of life together, I want to read these words from Isaiah 61 over you both. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Some of you may know this, others will be yet to discover it, but there's no such thing as retirement in the kingdom of God. <laughs> <laughs> there's new patterns <laughs> new hobbies new pastimes but there's no such thing as retirement and um, as your friends as your colleagues as your family it's our joy now to pray for you so Bishop Lee Liz I wonder if you would come and stand at the front and um, Bishop Viv Archdeacons I wonder if on behalf of our diocese you would come and lay hands on them as we pray together yeah stand here it's your, it's your moment, Bishop Lee. <laughs> um, if you're comfortable doing so, and please only do this if you feel comfortable doing so, as I pray, if you would like to, you can stretch out a hand so that from wherever you're sat in this room, maybe even if you're watching online at home, you can join in with this moment. 
um, as we bless Bishop Lee and Liz, our friends, our leaders, people we love dearly as they move on to this next stage of life. So um, come and join us, Bishop Viv, Archdeacons, as we pray. Father, as the friends, as the family, of the, as the colleagues of Liz, of Bishop Lee, we thank you for the ministry and the friendship that they have exercised among us over these last 18 years. And we pray your richest, your fullest, and your deepest blessing on them in this next stage of life together. We pray that again in this moment you would fill them with that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And as you fill them again with your Holy Spirit, we pray that all those fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, that they would bubble up afresh in this next period of life for Bishop Lee and for Liz. Father, would you withhold no heavenly blessing from them? Would you bless their new home? Would you bless their friendships, old and new? Would you bless the increased amount of time that they're able to spend together and with their family? And Father, for all that they've done in this diocese over these last 18 years, we commit to you, remembering the words of Scripture, that one plants, another waters, but the Lord makes it grow. Amen. Amen. And um, as we just remain here for a couple of moments more, if you would like to, I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory and the years, now and forever. Amen. 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 On behalf of all of us, God bless you and thank you. As uh, the last service where Bishop Lee is kind of an active uh, bishop in post, it seems appropriate to dedicate Patton Church uh, today. So I would like to invite Bishop Viv, <laughs> hope you're expecting this, <laughs> and or Bishop Viv, if you'd like to introduce then these prayers of dedication. Well... I am delighted we're doing this. Bishop Lee, I'm not at all sure what I'm needed to do at the moment, except to celebrate all the work that lies behind this place, and most of it instigated by you, with so many others. That's how you work, always with others. So the Patton Church today, at least informally, and this is an informal place, becomes pattern, Christ our pattern. So I have some formal words now just given to me. <laughs> we do just in time in this diocese. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, it is a great joy to gather to celebrate and give thanks for the ministry of the church in so many places and with such diverse expression. We have offered thanksgiving today, especially for the ministry of Bishop Lee and all the work of the Holy Spirit that has flowed from his ministry as Bishop of Swindon. And now we come to dedicate this pattern church to the glory of God and as a place for the continued building up of the body of Christ in faith, and hope and love. Bishop Lee. The 
says on my piece of paper. <laughs> We're really coordinated here. <laughs> Just to say something about the background, uh, which I'll do. You happy with that? <laughs> Sounds wonderful. That's what we're supposed to be doing, I think. Aren't we really organized brilliantly? Um, basically, the question is about, and with uh, Joel here, are you talking before me, actually, Joel? I think you're saying <laughs> something before me. I was going to, but... Yeah, um, <laughs> say, say something Real. first. Uh, go, go come and join me, Kath. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Joel. I'm the senior leader here at Patton Church, and Kath is, is my associate leader. And um, the vision here at Patton Church is very simple inviting people into family to serve Swindon. That's what we're about, inviting people into family to serve Swindon. Swindon is an amazing town, as many of you know, but um, we, there's something like 200,000 people in our town who, who don't know the peace and the joy and the life that a relationship with Jesus brings. And so that's right at the heart of, our, of, of, of why we're here as a church and why, why Lee in, instigated this building to, to come alongside the many other brilliant churches and joining this mission. So that's the vision, very simply, inviting people into family to serve Swindon. And Kath will say a little bit about what some of those look like. So um, the vision starts with inviting, and we invite anyone who wants to to come and gather with us to worship. Um, we're doing that here at the moment, um, since this brilliant building has been refurbished for us by the diocese, which is such a treat to be able to worship here. And um, we work really hard to make worship really accessible for people who might not have done church ever, or might have had a hard time with church. It feels like a real privilege to invite people back to church who might be willing to give it another shot. Um, or people who maybe um, just haven't been in church for a long time would like to give it another go. So we work really hard to make our worship work for those people. Maybe some of you are sitting here today. And um, we also work hard to make our worship work really well for under 40. So that's kids, youth, young adults, young families. And um, we want people to be able to come and worship together and gather. So that's inviting people um, into family we then hope and pray that we learn to be family together. We talk about not just the people coming into the family, like the, the baby um, believers maybe, but also we want sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and mums and dads um, to be part of this family, to be growing together, to be journeying together, following Jesus together. So um, we do that here on a Sunday. We do that in um, small groups, pattern groups. We've got people meeting to study the Bible all over Swindon. Um, there's lots of food involved, great cakes, things like that. Um, that's what being family for us is about. So inviting people into family. To serve Swindon. And that's um, it's a key part of our heart and, uh, and our calling. And we believe, as, 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 as so many of you do here, that, um, that, the, that the church is called to make a difference to the people around them, to not just speak about Jesus, but also demonstrate his love in action. And you saw a little bit about, about, about that a moment ago with, um, with Chris's video about Swindon welcomes Ukraine and all that's happened here over this last year. As, um, as church family have said, actually, of course, we want to open up our arms, and that's been just beautiful. Other things that looks like is we, we've had relationships with um, with Safe Families, who's an ongoing partner of ours, as, as well as, as other things around youth mentoring. And then um, here at Patton Church, every week, people come for debt advice. So Cross Light Debt Advice every Thursday is, is up on the top floor. And Grow Baby every Wednesday is a baby bank for families to come and to come and um, get the things that they need, as well as find the community. And um, if you want to find out any more about those things, about Crosslight, about Grow Baby, about, um, about the table, which is our ministry with Ukrainians, there'll be some guys on, on, on the first floor a little bit later who'd, who'd love to tell you a little bit more. And it's also been church planting. So a year and a half ago, we sent out a wonderful team into another part of Swindon to start a new church. And that's a key part of how we serve Swindon. And it's also about coming alongside other churches. So we've had other churches come and have tables on our Alpha course. And um, Bishop Lee mentioned Alpha. If you are wondering about exploring faith yourself, Alpha starts this coming Wednesday. And um, why don't you come along to the first night at 7.30 here at Baton Church. We'd love to welcome you. But um, that's what we're about. We're about inviting people into family to serve Swindon. And it's been wonderful to see what the Lord's done over this last four and a bit years. And we're excited to, what, to see what he does from this building and beyond um, in the coming years. Thank you. Um, the kind of vision of this church was, was a lot of people working together. But without saying too much, because we've heard a lot, I think I want to just say the key thing for me was, was when we had the very first conversation about starting a resource church 
and we were told what kind of building we were looking for. I thought, it's got to be that restaurant place. (laughs) (laughs) And um, it took a bit of um, selling, I have to say, to, to, to folk. But actually, this has been exactly the right place we needed to plant a church which is going to serve a wider area, uh, support churches, support kingdom of God stuff. L- a lot of you good people here, whether you, you, know, you may not be Christian, you know, say, I can't say I'm a car-carrying Christian, but you may be well doing that work Jesus called the kingdom. Because you can do kingdom work and not really know who the king is. And it counts a lot. And thank you for the kingdom work that's been done by so many of you. But in the end, we had this building, which was quite a lot of money. But the bishop's council were brilliant. There's one of them, and I won't point to him, who was particularly helpful. Because he said, he was looking at the money. And he said, well, actually, buying that building, oh yes, another rather dilapidated, <laughs> dilapidated, um, what is it, second class, no, what do we call them, the, the first class, it's listed, yeah, 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 <laughs> another listed building that needs lots of re- work on it, well, not that we have any of those already, um, but, it, but he said, he said to the council, he said, look, this is basically three Clergy houses, clergy houses are expensive, folks. If it all flops, we've lost three of those houses. We don't want to lose them, but if this goes, if God's in this, this is going to be far more, bring in far more for the kingdom, and actually, in the long run, far more money, because people who love Christ actually give. (laughs) We give, we give our money. And so, he convinced people. And I didn't have to twist his ears or anything like that. And what we've got now is a a church which is serving Swindon. And what really, really works for me is that it was a vision of having social transformation. And you've already just heard Joel um, and Kath talk about the things that happen here. And they happen and they transform the lives of people who are often feeling at the bottom of society. And that's got to be things we're doing more of. So now, oh, and of course, the church planting. Plant churches, which plant churches, which plant churches. And we've already had one, and there are now 140 people of all different ages worshipping in North Swindon because of plant. You let a number of your people go to serve another part of Swindon. Thank you for that. And you gave them money, which you couldn't afford, but you did it. Brilliant. Would you stand? There's one more thing, and that is what happened before we ever knew that this was the place God wanted. And it relates to a key, and Liz has got it. Thank you. The pattern store, where all the patterns for the uh, locomotives, etc., were made, was closed. What was it, the 1960s? 80s, 1980s. And um, what happened after we decided we were going to buy this was that... Um, Janice, used to be my secretary, spoke here, uh, told her mum. And her mum said, oh, I've got something you might be interested in. And she she went off and came back with this. This is a bit of rather tired leather (laughs) uh, with a key in it. Her husband, Jim Cars, Janice's dad, was the person who locked the doors on the pattern store. Locked the doors on the pattern store. The key was in someone who was working in the bishop's office. (laughs) 
from the beginning. So with that in mind, let us pray for the dedication of this church. That the pattern of Christ's life may be continually known in lives transformed by grace. Christ, our pattern, you call us to have our lives shaped by your life, to have our hearts and minds fashioned by the Father's grace and loving purpose, and to pattern our life together. According to the gifts of your Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for the life of this church and for the growing community who gather here to be formed together as your living body. May you continue to shape their lives as they share their faith, plant new Christian communities, connect with young people, and offer hope through social action. May your ways continue to be followed faithfully. May your truth continue to transform all who come. And may your life be known in all its fullness. We pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Peace to this house from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace to this house from his risen Son, who is our peace. Peace to this house from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We got there in the end. We put up our hands to that. And we're going to come now to our final hymn, after which I will be inviting Bishop Viv to come and give us a blessing. Uh, then there'll be a short program afterwards and some drinks, and Stephanie will explain all about what's going to happen after the blessing. So join us in singing, Be Thou My Vision.
we continue in prayer, a blessing particularly for Liz and for Lee. This is an Easter blessing as the Christian Church continues to celebrate Easter. And in each part, there is a conclusion, picking up a phrase that Bishop Lee used earlier. And all the people said... And you can say Alleluia as well. That's fine. <laughs> Amen, Alleluia. After each part. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. Alleluia. God the Son, who in bursting from the tomb has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you continue to share the Easter faith. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who fills the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you both and fill you with Christ's peace. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Alleluia. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you both always. Amen. Alleluia. Thank you. That is the end of the formal part of the service. Can I just say 30 seconds now to stretch if you need to stretch? Uh, so arms up, whatever. I used to be a teacher, so 